so we are uh, just a couple days away from opening school, and we're very excited to to have you guys uh, joining us. Um, welcome to Douglas. I am uh, Dr. Whitbeck. I am your school principal, and uh, that is my dog, Coda, with me. Um, Coda will not be able to join us at school this year. He is doing remote schooling uh, at our house. So um, he will be helping my high school student um, with, with his asynchronous days. Um, with us also today is Mrs. Lorenega. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. We're so excited for, for you to join us next week. Uh, and also our PTO co-chairs, uh, Susan. Good morning. Uh, and a is Ashley here as well? Yes. Excellent. So. Do you want to say hello, Ashley? <laughs> She's muted. Mrs. Cook. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> Technical <laughs> difficulties on my end. <laughs> That's okay. We uh, um, we're gonna we're gonna all be masters of Zoom uh, by the end of the year. Uh, give us another another six months at least. Um, all right. So um, we're gonna go right through a whole bunch of slides. Um, if you have any questions, you can post them in the chat. Um, and we will try to monitor that as well. Um, just post questions. Um, uh, let's. We we're not going to. Um, we're not going to chat. Um, you know, just with uh, with our new friends. We'll have plenty of time for that. Um, two people that you really do need to know who they are are Sharon Crooks and Lori Maylander. Um, Sharon and Lori uh, are our office um, administrator and uh, support assistant. Um, so, um, so you, if you call the phone, um, if you call the phone, um, you're probably going to get one of them. Oh, by the way, this uh, webinar is probably going to be about a half an hour or so. Um, uh, so. Uh, our phone number uh, for safe arrival, if your child is not going to be here uh, or going to be late, uh, going to be absent, you can call the safe arrival phone number and leave a message. That is not a, a live phone number. Um, or even better, uh, please log in to the uh, PTO website and, um, and use the safe arrival um, function there and it will gather all the information all the information is really important so you can put that all there um, and then any other things that you have going on questions you have Sharon and Lori are very 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 able to answer those questions um, if your child arrives late to school um, they come to the front door there's a there's a doorbell over on the brick wall uh, away from the door. You just ring that doorbell. Um, we can see you from the inside and um, they will unlock the door for you electronically. So you have to listen for a little click and then you can open the door. Um, it's, it's relatively fast. So you, you ring the doorbell, walk over by the door, wait for the click and they will, they will let you in. They'll probably say something like, go ahead. Um, all right, so uh, Sharon and Lori are two really important people um, to get to know. Um, so priorities for the year, and then I'm going to give our PTO co-chairs a, a chance to say a few words. So, um, so health and safety are always our uh, our top priority. Um, we uh, we it's Douglas is a really warm place. Um, we really really care about each other. Um, we're we're looking forward to being together after so many of us have been apart, and to welcome you guys in. Uh, and we are going to meet you where you are. Don't worry if you you know spent the last year 
not opening a math book or or you read every page of um of Harry Potter and then the encyclopedias. Um, we are gonna, we're gonna be ready for you. Um, and, um, and we know that each of you is different. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna figure out, figure out where you're strong and where you need to grow and, and take you from there. But, um, but please remember that um, we need you, um, parents, to really be communicating with us all the time. Um, so no question is too small. Don't worry about bothering us. Um, we really do need your help. And, and since we're talking about communication, I thought this would be a great time for our PTO co-chairs um, uh, to kind of talk about their roles and how they're, what they're going to be doing with us this year. So Susan and Ashley. Um, great. I'll, I'll go first. Can everyone hear me now? I've, I think I fixed my technical glitch. Great. Um, I'm Ashley Cook, and I am one of the PTO co-chairs this year. I have two daughters at Douglas. They're in second grade and fifth grade, and they're really looking forward to uh, meeting some new friends who are in their grades. And um, we also wanted to let you know that we have sent out a little welcome packet for you that you should be receiving in the mail this week. So keep an eye out for an envelope from the PTO and um, inside is just a letter welcoming you and a couple of important information things and uh, a couple of fun things. So we just wanted to let you know that we're really, really excited to welcome you all to school. And even though this year is going to be a little bit or a lot different than it normally is in terms of PTO events and ways that we can keep our community together and involved, um, we are trying to be as creative as we can, and we're really looking forward to trying to engage our new families in our PTO activities. Thank you. And hi, my name is Susan Giulietti, and uh, I have three kids at Douglas, one in first grade, one in third grade, and one in fifth grade. And uh, we'll be working with the board and um, and the school to try to make this a great year. And if there's anything that we can do to help any of you answer any questions, there's an opportunity to uh, sign on to the Douglas Facebook page where there's lots of updates and information as well as signing into um, the Eagle Eye Weekly, which is a weekly um, notification that comes out on email on Sunday, which has important dates. And so those are two great resources for you to get a lot of information and um, we can uh, there's a information in your packet that you'll receive that Ashley mentioned on how to access both of those. So welcome, and um, we look forward to working with everybody. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, so Douglas, in a nutshell, there's so many things that are, are special to us. Um, and, um, and I just want to mention um, kind of the, the highlights here. Um, so uh, so we, we talk about meeting students where they are uh, and, um, and moving everybody forward. And that really is what we, we do. Uh, that's what we're going to try uh, to continue this year. Uh, we, have, um, we have 11 different spaces um, identified outside as outdoor classrooms this year. So um, we are really going to be trying to uh, do some different things, um, and we're very, very excited. I, as I mentioned already, communication is critical to us, um, and, um, and you know, we, will, we will be using all of those things that um, our PTO co-chairs mentioned, like the Douglas Facebook site. Um, we have a little Twitter, Twitter feed that uh, we'll try to uh, bring up again. Um, uh, I will continue the daily principal updates as long as I possibly can until my, um, uh, 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 until my fingers give out, I guess, um, or I have nothing else to say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and um, and so we will we will try to keep you as informed as possible. Um, so one thing that you may not know that much about for Douglas School is what we call exhibitionary learning. So we we use um, some very traditional uh, um, curriculum 
at Douglas School, uh, we use uh, Investigations Math or IM Math. Those are two different programs. Um, they are both very uh, exploratory, hands-on, minds-on mathematics programs. Uh, and um, whether your kids are in IM Math or, or Investigations Math, it doesn't matter. We're all learning the same content. Um, the district is just piloting uh, some different math programs uh, this year. Uh, and, um, and we also use Reading Street. We use Foundations as a phonics program in, uh, in the primary grades. So there's some very traditional ma uh, instruction, uh, both in math and language arts. Uh, uh, and, um, but on top of that is this umbrella of exhibitionary learning. Twice a year, we give kids a big question that they can't possibly answer. Like, what is it like to climb Mount Everest? Or, or, um, or how can I be the best community member that I can be? Or what happened to the old cigar factory in West Acton? Um, and so, uh, so we take all the things that we learn during the semester and we apply that uh, to... Um, answering this question. And then twice a year, we have had a large exhibition of learning. Now, I share that with you because that's what we've always done. Um, and uh, this year, we are trying to figure out how we do that because the large exhibition in January and then once again in June uh, is a time when the entire community traditionally comes to Douglas School and sees what our learning is like. Uh, but we are, we are very aware that that may not be able to happen. Um, and we are also very aware that we've got a lot of, lot, a lot, a lot of work to do this year. Um, uh, so we're trying to figure out how exhibitions are going to happen. One thing that I do know is that this is a unique year, like no other year that we have ever had before. Um, and, and we really want to try to capture that. So some of our exhibition work may be creating a living history of what this year is like, um, because to document it and really create an archive of, of our experience will be, uh, will be fascinating for generations to come. So um, uh, I'm hoping that we can do a, a great job of that, and that will maybe be an all-school exhibition. But you may hear about exhibition, and that's what we're talking about. Um, these projects. Uh, it's kind of a project-based learning uh, approach, but it's, it's unique to Douglas School. Uh, progress reports. Um, and then, I'm, then I might turn it over to Mrs. Lorenega to talk a little bit about lunch and recess um, and outside learning. But progress reports. Um, we do have progress reports or report cards, as people like to call them. Um, they are based on the state standards, and um, you can get... Um, you can get, and they're numbered, uh, each standard, you can get either a one, two, three, or four. Um, and a one being, I am really just starting to learn this. I, I need a lot of practice. Four being, I've mastered it and I apply it all the time. Um, and our, our job um, is to pay attention to uh, where kids are on that spectrum uh, and, and to communicate it to you um, and to move them forward. So um, at the beginning of the year, you might see, you know, more ones and twos than you would at the end of the year. And that's perfectly fine. Um, uh, it really is meant to, to, to help parents understand the level of mastery that we believe that their kid has uh, gotten to in, in, uh, in learning. Um, and we report that um, three times a year. Uh, in the, our fall conferences, which will be done by Zoom, uh, your classroom teacher will go over the actual progress report uh, form with you uh, so that you have a better idea of, of what that looks like and what we'll be working on uh, in the months to come. Uh, Mrs. Lorenga, how about lunch and recess this year? Well, lunch and recess is very exciting this year. Um, we're going to have lunch in the classrooms this year. And if you order a lunch from the lunchroom, it will be delivered um, to you where you will eat. We're gonna have a shortened lunch period of about 15 minutes because masks will be off. Um, if we need a little longer, we'll be flexible. And then we have a 35 minute recess block this year. Um, we were able to schedule it such that each grade is outside alone um, in a different, different playground um, Space, which is excellent. 
And we were able to schedule all of our recesses before our lunch, except for the fifth grade. We couldn't get that one to work, but everybody else will have recess before lunch. Um, and we'll be going over some of the expectations in small groups once school starts around um, what we're going to have happen on the playground. And outside learning, I think you mentioned that we're gonna have whiteboards and um, cushions to sit on around the school in 11 different spaces. We're very excited about that. We're all um, in favor of using the outside to learn. Excellent. All right. And so um, those are kind of the unique things to Douglas School that you might not know about as a new student or a new parent. Um, the rest of the program is going to be what we're going to share uh, I believe on Friday um, with the rest of the school. Um, and so we thought we'd share it with you so that you didn't have to come to two webinars. Um, and then uh, and then we'll see a bunch of you this afternoon. So let's, uh, let's move right on. Uh, masks, this is the year of masks. We are, um, we are wearing our masks at all times, except if we are in our classrooms alone um, or our offices alone. Uh, um, we will have mask breaks, both in the classroom and outside. Um, the mask breaks in the classroom will be short. Everybody will be at their desks six feet apart. Um, you'll take off your masks for a couple minutes, maybe five minutes. And, and then put them back on. We'll, we're gonna be outside as much as possible and we will have mask breaks out, outside. Um, there'll be lots of times when we don't have to wear our masks outside. If we're sitting and we're, more than, we're six feet or more apart, um, we won't be wearing our masks. Um, and, um, and, and, and teachers, um, you know, in the classroom will be wearing their masks all the time. They'll come up to students. They will be less than six feet apart um, uh, working uh, as a teacher. Um, not for very long, um, but they may walk up and, and show a student how to do something and then move, and move away. So just so that you know that um, lots of mask wearing, um, come with two clean masks. We have extra paper masks. Um, I think we are all set uh, in, in that area. Um, physical distancing. Um, we have marked the school uh, a lot. Uh, you can see exactly where you need to stand in the hallways. Um, desks are six feet apart. Um, teachers are going to be doing that, uh, making sure that that happens every morning. Um, and, um, and we are... Uh, um, and there are blue lines as you walk through the hallways. Uh, if you look at any of our videos, you'll see that the hallways are, are marked. We have a video about walking through the hallway. Um, you refresh yours? Because I put the pictures in. We might be able to see the blue lines, but I don't know how it works when you're on Zoom. So it's an experiment. Yeah, I don't think I can do it now. Okay. I also wanted to add on the... Oh. Your Forget your mask. We have them for you. I know you said that, Dr. Whitebeck, but I just want to remind everybody that as a school, we will do whatever we can to support you and what you need. So um, there's no problem that we can't solve as long as we work on it together. Uh, can kids snack during recess or mask breaks? Um, we're going to have, a, we, we'll have snack breaks. Um, specifically, but yes, um, there will be designated times for that. We just always have to actually wash our hands at our sinks before and after we eat. All right. So, um, so we will be uh, having snack breaks. Those will be times when the masks are off and we also are going to be washing our hands. Arrival. Um, so arrival is very different this year. It won't be different for you guys because you're new. Um, but Mrs. Lavanaga, you want to run through arrival? Yes, absolutely. So if you are arriving in a car with a parent, you're going to come to the side of the school that is on Elm Street. This is true, but unfortunate. It's where our dumpsters are located. So if you see where the dumpsters are, there's a loop around there. If you are arriving, um, coming from Central Street, you'll just turn right into the loop, drop off your child and continue right. It's going to be right hand turns only into our drop off loop. If you come from Arlington Street, we'd ask that you go to the tennis courts to reverse direction so that you are entering from the right. 
The reason for this is that in a normal year, we have a lot of bottlenecks that happen when parents try to exit left out of our loop. And because we're going to have so many driving by car, we've made some changes um, and we've asked the police to help us design a better way to make sure that we're moving um, quickly and safely. If you arrive by bus, Yes. Is there a, I thought, is there a slide for that? Uh, no, uh, so yes, there is. It, the buses are gonna pull up one at a time and they're gonna, I'm pointing out my window like you can see. Um, they're gonna stop at the very end of our bus loop one at a time and let the children off. The kindergartners have designated spaces. Uh, one is at the garden by the front door and one is on the green grass by the side door where their teachers will meet them or the assistants will meet them. There'll be a teacher or an assistant also at the drop-off loop. Once here, first and second are going to go down and they're gonna enter the school through the, um, the opening that's by the library. The third and fourth graders are going to depart and they're gonna go up and there's an entrance on the side of the school. And the fifth and sixth graders are going to come in the front door. We're trying to keep everyone as separate as possible as they arrive into the building. Thank you. Uh, the school is going to be closed until 8.35 in the morning. So please don't arrive before 8.35. Please don't let your children outside uh, before 8.35. Um, the buses will not be arriving here before or unloading before 8.35. So um, that's when the teachers and assistants uh, and administrators are gonna come outside and open the school and allow people in. Uh, we have a question about snacks. Um, can, uh, will parents be providing snacks? Yes, parents are providing snacks. You can send them in your lunchbox and, and go over with your child what, um, what they have for snack and what they have for um, uh, their lunch. Okay. Uh, dismissal. Um, dismissal is kind of the same thing. So um, walkers are dismissed first at 315. Um, they can walk home uh, and um, they will be coming out the main lobby doors. Uh, parent car pickup is right after that. Um, and, uh, and that help happens through our Elm Street doors, um, exactly where you came in uh, to drop off. Uh, that's where you pick up. Uh, if you have um, somebody else picking up, that's fine. Um, and as long as your child recognizes them and the car, uh, if it's a regular pickup, uh, please have them in your emergency contacts. Um, and then uh, for dismissal, uh, for the buses, we will call two buses at a time. Children will stay in their classroom until the buses are, are called and then they will go out the appropriate doors. Um, uh, um, you can send in anything that your child is gonna take home with them. Uh, it's not all disposable, so you can do that. Um, and then um, uh, the school cafeteria uh, has will have a online menu that's probably up already under the food services department on the on the school district website, um, and um, they will uh, you can go over your food choices with your child there, um, and and if you have any specific questions, you can call the main office and they can connect you with the food service manager at the at the school. Um, uh, if you are walking your child to and from school, you can come come right down, um, come come right down the sidewalk and um, leave your child um, at the front of the school. Um, when you're picking them up, I think it's best, uh, and we will say this to everybody, that um, parents just wait um, by the Douglas School sign uh, along the sidewalk there, uh, and you can pick up your child there at the end of the day. They will walk out to you. Uh, lunch and recess, I think we've gone over. Um, we, can't, uh, we can't say enough that we are going outside. <laughs> um, I can't believe it. Uh, what's that? So I can't believe I forgot to mention that. That's so important. We are going outside. So welly boots, raincoats, snow gear, 
mittens, hats. If they're not dressed, they're still going out. So make sure they come with all the right gear, please. If you have an older student and they like to wear shorts year round, this is not the year to do that once it gets cold because um, we're going to try to spend as much time outside as possible. Mm -hmm. um, uh, mosquitoes. We've never had a mosquito problem, really. Knock wood. This might be the year. Uh, we'll let you know. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so we, we do... Um, uh, we're not out during mosquito time. Um, it does get bad at night, uh, but um, I spend a lot of time outside school in the summertime and it's really not, not uh, an issue at all. Um, uh, that does remind me that the school district has asked, and I'm gonna be uh, communicating this in the next couple of days uh, in my updates, that um, you not send hand sanitizer with your child. Um, we have a lot of san hand sanitizer here. Um, we would rather use the approved hand sanitizer and not be uh, policing and managing everybody else's hand sanitizer. Uh, rain pants. Um, if it's, um, I don't think we're going to be out if it is that rainy and I not think, every, not everybody is going to have rain pants. Yeah. I think wellies and a rain jacket are enough. If it's raining sideways, then I guess we'll have to concede and stay in. Um, your teacher will will um, talk to you specifically about what can be left and what can't be left at school. Some of our classrooms, frankly, have a little bit more um, boot and jacket storage than others. Um, and so it all depends on, on where you are in the building. Okay. Um, but... Um, yeah, so uh, just dress appropriately, um, maybe even throw in an extra pair of clothes um, on rainy days or snowy days. And th this is kind of a home, home and school bags. So, you know, what should you bring every day? Um, uh, so uh, you're going to get, a, every child is going to get a box of materials to bring back and forth. They're going to get an iPad or a Chromebook um, and, and a chargers. And those need to come back and forth every day. So iPad, Chromebook, charger, um, uh, uh, pencil box. Uh, that stuff is in your backpack every day. Snacks is in your bag every day. Uh, lunch, if you are bringing your lunch. Water bottles. Please bring a water bottle. We have a water bottle filling station. We have sinks in every classroom. Um, so uh, bring a water bottle. We're not going to be using our, our water fountains this year. Um... A change of clothes if the weather looks bad. Um, in the winter, we're told that we're going to be keeping our window open and the heat blowing. Uh, it's, go it's going to be cool. It might even be downright cold in the classrooms. So um, extra layers of clothing um, is always going to be good in the winter. Um, if your kids, uh, I would uh, for bringing the computer to and and to and from school, um, I would ask that in school that they use the district um, uh, provided computer uh, and not and not a not a personal computer. I worry two things: one that it would get broken, and two that um, we won't have the tech support. Um, to, to uh, connect it to our internet or whatever, any other problems that, that um, might happen. So um, for school, please just use your school-issued computer. Uh, Mrs. Laronica, anything else in the go bags that you can think of? No, you covered it. The extra masks, maybe? Mm. Right, two masks. Yep, two masks. I heard you say snack, which is important because it's a long day without a snack. All right. So this one makes us all very sad. 
because in a normal year, we're very, very, very family first. Parents, please come inside of our school. But for this school year, we're not going to be allowing parents into the building. So if you need to drop something off for your child, there'll be a bin placed outside um, and you can ring the buzzer, the same one you would ring if you were late for school and someone will come and get the item for you. So it's different, but not for you all, but we're sad about it too. All right. So welcome to Douglas, um, and this is Doug the Eagle. Um, uh, Doug is our school mascot. Um, you might see him around somewhat, um, and uh, and we look forward to having you here. Are there any questions that we can answer now? If you want to uh, raise your hand electronically, um, we can do that, um, and. Um, Otherwise, we will see you at your assigned times um, today. Or any other questions in the chats? Just curious if there's other new first graders here. We do have a number of first graders. I just want to say this is Sophia. She's excited. <laughs> Excellent. I think she's already is... doing an eye roll at the right page of six. <laughs> All right. Well, we teach we teach uh, advanced eye rolling uh, later uh, in grade four as well. Do you think the other kids who are on could just say their name and which grade they're in, so we can know as if. Sure, if they're comfortable, I'd, uh, we'd love to. We'd we'd love to have you say hello. I'm guessing my kids are comfortable, but go ahead if you are. <laughs> you have to unmute yourself. Hi, my name is Addie, and I'm going into fourth grade. Hi, Dad. Hi, my name is Isu. I'm going to first grade. Welcome. Hi, my name is Sophia. I'm going to first grade. Welcome to Douglas, Sophia. <laughs> Hi. I, I'm Deepak and I'm I go to third grade. It's been like more. It's been like six months since last time. Last time I went to school. And we I'm like not. And I'm not like happy like about learning with the screen time and those stuff. Well, we look forward to having you, Deepak. Yeah. We'll be live and in person. What other one? Cool. I see. Uh, let's see. Um, I see Scout and is it Henry's parents? Is that yeah? Yes, they're they're at camp, so so uh, they are not here right now. But um, we'll be visiting later this afternoon. But we have Henry, who's going to first grade, and then Scout is um, entering fourth grade. So they are very excited, very, very excited. Um, we are excited to have you. Uh, is there, are there other people who have not said hello who would like to say hello? I'll give you one last chance. Hi, my name is Abby and I'm going into fifth grade. My name is Abby and I'm going into fifth grade. Bye. Welcome. Welcome. All right, last chance. Did we get everybody? I think Simon wants to say hello, but his mic isn't working. So hi, Simon. Welcome to Douglas. Um, and um, and I saw that Simon asked one snack or two. Uh, Simon, I always say it's better to have more snacks than not enough. Um, you don't have to eat them all. 
<laughs> uh, okay. That's a true story. <laughs> um, uh, I mentioned the use of no use of water fountains. Um, uh, so if you can just bring a refillable water uh, water bottle, we have um, we have places to refill the water bottles. Um, we have a, a filling station in our cafeteria, um, and we'll organize the use of that. Um, all right. So, um, so we have uh, scheduled visits this afternoon. It will be Mrs. Loranaga and me uh, uh, and I uh, doing that. So um, we will see you then. For families who couldn't make it, I hope that this is informative to you. And as always, if you have any questions, um, shoot us an email and uh, we'll get right back to you. Uh, and we are, yesterday we had kindergartners here. It was awesome and we can't wait to have you guys. All right. So uh, have a great morning. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.